Have you guys ever wondered how candles are made? Or maybe you know how they're made and you just like some tips on how to perfect them? Well, stay tuned. In today's video, you're gonna find out. I'm so excited that Amy was willing to let me film her as she's making candles in her basement. And yes, at this point, the business is run out of the basement, but things are gonna change as they're growing. Amy has been hand pouring all of our candles for us for the Etsy shop for the past number of years, and we could not be happier with the job she's doing with them. So let's head on over to Amy's house. As you can see, we have a beautiful morning here in Ohio, really enjoying the spring season that we're in. For those of you that don't know, or maybe you're new to my channel, we live in Holmes County, Ohio. It's in the northeastern part of the state, and it's also the largest Amish community in the world. We get a few million, yes, million visitors every year to our area. Uh, pros and cons with that, gonna be honest. Uh, we love our tourists, but it's also a hassle sometimes to get to places, especially during the summertime with all the traffic, but it is a blessing to live in an area that is really prosperous, you know, due to a lot of the tourism. So let's get right into making candles, and Amy will do most of the explaining here, of course, and every now and then I may add a voiceover in case we, you know, missed anything. Here she's starting out by showing us what kind of wax she uses. It's like a 100% soy, it comes out of soybeans, and everything is 100% soy. This is what they call 464 wax, and I've just found it's one of the more popular ones, and it just, it does very well. So I added this this morning. Sometimes it takes about an hour. It's a little on the warm side, but I think we can, I like when it is slightly hotter than what I wanted in my pictures. Uh -huh. For the past few years, Amy has been using this pretty amazing wax melter. Uh, here she will explain a little more about it. It comes from, I mean, you can get it at different places. This comes from the company Candle Science, mm -hmm. and um, it is a workhorse. It totally a game changer when you make candles. Another way, if you want to make candles at home, just in your kitchen, you can get yourself a pour pitcher. And another very important thing is a digital, or any, a digital scale and instead of you know investing in a big melter you can use this and melt your wax down you set it in here nice. and that is how I st that's how I started uh -huh. so I could make wow. three big candles at a time <laughs> is that how what you were doing when we first started yeah. oh, really so I'm gonna start with doing one batch of the 16 ounce um, pint jars. Amy gets most of her jars from Fillmore Container Company. And here she's having some issues with some of the jars having smudges on the inside. She's taking a cloth and wiping them. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a batch of the brown amber. And I don't know. Okay. do 10 in a batch. Here she's getting the jars ready to heat in the stove and she will explain why she does that. Do that because uh, for two reasons. I feel it helps the wax uh, not draw away from the jar as easily and also there seems to be just a slight finish on the jars that keeps your wicks from sticking. Oh, and so oh, that... it really um, gets the glue to stick to the bottom okay. of the jar. She has her oven at 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so I weigh this out in ounces. And for a batch of large the pint jars, I want 73 ounces of wax. Okay, then I pour it over. I just find this is much easier to be accurate than weighing straight out of the spigot. Okay, 73, now I check my temperature. I want it around 180 to 185. You don't want to add your fragrance oil too hot or you'll lose some of it, it'll evaporate, but you also don't want to go too cold or it doesn't combine okay. and bind well. So now I'm gonna set this over. I usually mix two at a time so I'm not stirring. Um, here. Only want just, you know, to be more efficient. Right, uh-huh. So next we will do the 10 amber and those um, get the exact same amount of wax as the oh, six okay. large. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Easy to remember. 
So do you have all these numbers in your head? You probably don't even have to look at a paper um, to kind of know. When I'm doing my basic, the ones I've, that I do the most of, yeah. But I do have to, I have a little tablet. And if I'm making odd batches, I'll make notes here. Uh -huh, sure. <laughs> then I like to use these little jelly jars as my, for my fragrance. Okay, so I am gonna do orange and peppercorn for the large. And as odd as it may seem, I weigh this out in grams or mil. Oh, okay. Uh, simply uh -huh. because if you go to multiply, it's a lot easier than multiplying point something ounce okay. times uh -huh. mm -hmm. seven or you know, some odd yeah, number. Yeah, I can see that. And this is totally people can fragrance. Um, the suggested amount is between six, the range six to 10% of the wax you use. And so you can play with it and see what you're comfortable with. Okay, now I'm going to check my temperature again. Oh, it smells so good. This is a favorite, the orange and peppercorn. <laughs> okay, that's about perfect for how I like it. I usually try and keep it just a little under 185. And this will be rosemary and sage. Oh, nice. Stand here and mix. Amy says stirring for around a minute and a half to two minutes is usually about right. You wanna you wanna stir enough that it blends well because if your oil doesn't blend, you might have drops on top of your candle. And uh, but then you don't want to viciously stir, or you might uh -huh. whip mm -hmm. air bubbles into it. Okay. Like one of my children happens to come through here about now, and then I put them to stand here and stir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they don't always like that. Amy is planning on pouring some wax melts also along with the candles. With that, we will do the garden mint melts. And I sent my melts just a little heavier than I do the candles. And about 41 ounces makes around 15 of them. Now sometimes we uh, another thing you can do that can be fun is start like making your own blends, like your own recipes. Of... Do you always use the wooden spoons to stir? I do. do you kind of prefer that? Um, I mean, there's pros and cons. I like the wooden spoon. There is theory that they might absorb a little of the fragrance, so, but it is what I generally use. Uh -huh. That, or if you'd have a silicone, something that doesn't melt. Mmm, it smells so good. <laughs> the garden mint, I think, is what I'm smelling, or rosemary too. Rosemary yeah, uh -huh. yeah, it smells good, yeah. Okay, and the next step we'll do is get our wicks ready jar we're going to be doing. I use a CD18 and basically wherever you can buy wicks or you know most candle making places if they sell wicks they will probably have a wick guide that you can use to help you know uh, what kind of wicks that you want to start with and that is definitely only a guide. It still takes quite a bit of testing. If you want a wick that's large enough to melt, uh, to burn the candle down clean, but you don't want it so large that you have a huge flame, black around the top, and that your candle gets used up so fast. Key is testing. And I like these wick stickers. Another thing you can use is hot glue gun. I prefer these, they're just so much easier. And I like to get the kind that is, um, Wick Stickers Pro, they're just, they're real slim, so that you just get as much out of your candle as you can, oh, yeah. <laughs> so they don't sit up out of your wax. And not another thing neat about these wicks, they are cotton, there is like no zinc, no lead, nothing toxic in them. Still a little hot, I like our temperature to pour into jars to be between uh, not under 135, I prefer it around 140 to 145. So this is still a little hot, but we could get our jars prepped. Orange, peppercorn. And here I like to turn my, that the seam is on the side because our floor is a little crooked in here, 
and then my rack sometimes I don't want them to um, have a dip at all along the front because I don't like to label over the seam. If that makes sense. Now, eventually, our son-in-law designed and made a wicker, but I haven't had space in here to use it. So for now, I still eyeball and use the fork. Okay, so how would that work, a wicker? It's like a big metal thing, and it's got room for four jars, and then you just draw a handle down, and it'll put nice. it down. Nice. Uh -huh. It'll be a little something to get used to, uh -huh. so. Now, to um, keep your wicks straight and centered, there's different ways of doing it. Uh, what we have here, my this is... Hats off to my husband. He went to a wood shop and had them design really? these clips. And this clip fits um, at least three of my sizes. Oh, so we wow. just slide them on there and pull them into oh, wow. there and that perfectly centers them. That's so neat. I know I have to watch, they fill up with wax. Then, or, But if you're at home and you just want to do this at home, you can also use a popsicle stick with a hole in the middle. And then after we have the wax in, we'll use a clothespin to take the slack out of the wig. I like to make that there's space, uh, that they're not too crowded, so that air can circulate around them. That way they dry more evenly and you don't have um, as big of a chance for a sinkhole. Okay, this is a smaller wick. Just one size, well actually it might be two sizes smaller. It's a CD12. So if you start out with say a tin, a metal container, uh, something with the surface of this, I have found wick stickers don't want to uh, stick to the bottom when the, when the wax gets uh, poured into there and then your wick wants to come loose and float. And so I have found hot glue gun and Stanley, see if you can see the Stanley hot glue works great because the melt point has a higher uh -huh. melt point. Nice. And so. I just trim these so that I can get them more out of my baker's rack. If Amy has a lot of candles to make, she'll of course need to be adding more wax to her melter. Um, here she explains a bit about that. So I just usually, if I know I'm really doing a lot after every time I draw out at the end, then I'll just add not so much that it can't be melted. You kind of have to find the amount that it can melt by the time you're ready for it. You just want to pour kind of a steady stream. I like if I can get it all in one pour. Sometimes you do end up having to go back over and top them off a little bit. Um, there's less, there's more chance of a smooth top if you can do it without having to drop another round of wax in there. But I have found once they're cold, if you go back and add to them on a clear jar, then it will affect the side and how it looks on the side. So now I go through and just make sure these things are snug and fitted so that your wick has a good chance of being centered. And I like to add a clothespin here to keep it in place. This is just to show if people want to do it at home. And then I find I need to turn it around and eyeball it from this side go and it's ready for the drying rack. I've had some pictures that do not work well. I like when they're a little pointy sometimes I will actually just push them bend like them to bend them so they have more of a spell. These amber jars are a little more forgiving as far as if you want to add more later if they weren't quite as full as you wanted them. I'm being brown on the side. Oh, 
this is not going to be full enough. Oh well. Okay, that one will just have to be topped off later. So how would you do that then to top off? I will off? just later, if I uh, make rosemary sage, just add to it. I oh, find okay. for some reason these jars, it's not as big, even though they're clear, it's not as big of a deal. Somehow the, the big pint jar that has all that clear space uh -huh. shows things mm -hmm. more. I can see. So. Yeah. Here Amy is preparing to pour the wax melts. She also gets these containers from a Fillmore Container Company. Maybe some of you that make candles have had issues with the wax pulling away from the side of a jar. Here Amy kind of talks about that and what she thinks it might be. The wax actually itself might be doing some of it, but um, you know, and then even I'm drawing away from the side, like we, if we would have the air conditioner on, then down here in the basement it got colder than upstairs and the jars were cold to the touch and then I felt like they did worse. I just store them often with the lids off so oh, that anything uh -huh. can just evaporate. Oh, okay, uh -huh. I'll maybe do these. These are the sandalwood antique. Two things like, okay, so here we have a sinkhole and so you could just take a heat gun but probably when it's when it's this big, what I like to do is just take a pour pitcher and whenever I have like a little leftover wax or maybe just take a melt and pop a cube or two in there and I melt that down. I didn't know that could happen. This is the goal. Yeah, yeah, it looks perfect. Yeah, they actually all look perfect. Uh, that's how you want it. But you know, it's not not all is lost if you have and if you make candles, you're just gonna run into this. So if somebody would end up with holes in the candle, don't fret. You can fix it. And sometimes too, I have found when you're pouring, it looks fuller than it actually sometimes is when they dry. And then I just like sometimes just to top them off a little bit. Now I have found with clear jars, sometimes leave good enough alone. Like these have just a little ripple, but I'm just gonna leave that alone. It's fine, yeah. it'll do fine. Um, because you don't wanna overheat gun that you're, that this part of the jar gets hot, this is cold, then, then you can start having uh, it pull away and it just can make it look worse. Mm -hmm. So heat gun is great, but you don't want to overdo it. Another important thing, as you burn your candle, keep your wick trimmed, and that will give you a much nicer flame and keep your jar nice and clean instead of it getting, you know, a big um, kind of mushroom, or it shouldn't mushroom a lot, but if it does, just keep that wick trimmed and it'll keep your jar a lot nicer. And then you don't have the little embers in your wax mm -hmm, either. Right. So, would you advise to also trim them to like a fourth inch before even burning it? Uh, I would, but yeah. not too short uh -huh. because, um, yeah, I'd rather keep it a little on the plentiful side than because once it's cut off, it's uh -huh. too short. Too, yeah, once too late. You then can't really too, add it. Right, yeah. And then another important thing is to always, especially the first time you burn a candle, burn it until you have a nice melt pool all the way across the top and it just seems, uh, soy wax, it's been said it has like a memory and then it'll only kind of melt out to where it did before. I don't find that to be completely true because if you burn a candle long enough, have a large enough wick, it'll eventually catch up, sometimes by the second and third burn even. But preferably, if you can, for the first time, just make that it's all liquid all the way across before you blow it out. Yeah, which can often, for this size, take three, maybe three hours or so. Got this sinkhole we want to fix, just drizzle it in there. Might actually just go all the way across the top. Now they have to dry and then I take the heat gun to smooth them. Oh. Here Amy is wiping the jars first with a damp cloth and then with a dry one before applying the labels. She says for her it's easiest to put the jar in your lap to make sure the label is nice and centered. We get all of our labels printed at Inkscape which is a place local here. So when did you first start making candles or how did you get I into this? started back in 2015. Our family had moved to Ireland to help at a mission over there. 
and there was a local shop, kind of a convenience store with baked goods, small gift items, and they wanted candles to be continued to be in their shop. Someone formerly had been doing them. And so I took a sheet of instructions and called my sister. She had made candles and went online. And so that is where I started. And we got nearly all our supplies from the U.S. and have it come over with a container of, there was also a lumber business that we would be able to ship it with mm -hmm. that. And so that's where we started. And then when we moved back in 2017, I just, well, I don't know. It was something I didn't want to just quit. Uh-huh. So, nice. So that's... We're glad you didn't. Yeah. How, how we kept going. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. This is where the melts come in nice. Uh -huh. You have to do this. And sometimes when I end up with, maybe for some reason, you end up with extra when you're pouring a batch. And you can just use uh -huh. these. These are great because then you can just pop them back uh -huh. out and use it later. That's a good idea. So. Even though Amy is doing great with her business, you know, working out of the basement, they do have other plans. And I'm so happy for them. They actually have a brand new shop that they will eventually move all of their candle making equipment into and work out of there. Um, it's just a nice, open, bright space and she will have more room to maybe even hire more people to help. So excited for her. We're planning to have like a working island here in the center and along here is probably where we'll have our melters and do our mixing and then turn it in four and then at each end of the island we plan to be wow. excited. Yeah, that this is nice. Space. Love and it. So uh, the key is so that I can have more people involved in helping. How fun was that to see how Amy makes candles? Or I sure enjoyed it. I hope you guys did too. I know my video taking skills weren't the best. I'm not used to filming someone else. It was just different for me, but hopefully you guys were able to kind of see her process and maybe be inspired by it. I love how Amy works, like her hands don't waste any time, like she's always ready for the next thing, very efficient. I've always felt blessed to be able to work with Amy and having her hand poured candles in the Etsy shop, but especially now that I've seen the process and how often she handles each jar and how uh, much attention is given to each individual candle. I especially feel honored to be able to have her candles in the Etsy shop. And if you're looking for a great smelling candle, natural soy wax, make sure to check out our candles. And if you've never tried them, give them a try. I'm sure you're gonna like them. And if you are interested in maybe buying wholesale from Amy, I'll try to have her information down below in the description box. As always, I hope your day is going great. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.